All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we've got another red combine in the yard. And my friend here, Kelly, is here gonna talk about it. This is the new 160 series combine from Case IH. Absolutely. Excited to be here today. Um, behind me is a brand new 160 series combine. And in simplest terms, we took the technology from the 250 series, Harvest Command and a lot of the machine automation, and we migrated that technology into the new 160 series. So for many producers that are using a class six or class seven size machine, they can now have all the advantages of AFS Harvest Command and machine automation. We found that many producers, uh, when you talk to them, the biggest challenges that they are trying to solve today are labor. Labor shortages, especially during harvest. You know, they don't always have the ability to have the owner drive the combine. Sometimes it is uh, the retired uh, neighbor uh, next door, could be uh, some of the kids or the grandkids, uh, could be a high school kid. The advantage that Harvest Command brings to the producer is you can take that inexperienced operator mm -hmm. and by using Harvest Command, he can operate more efficiently and more productively and just like a seasoned veteran. Would. First up, what, what makes this different? Okay, so we still have a class six, 6160, okay. same rated horsepower, 348. We have this class seven, 7160. Uh, this is 375 rated horsepower. One of the big differences with the class seven is a much bigger grain tank. This comes standard with a 350 bushel grain tank on this 7160. So a lot of capacity. Yeah. In fact, it's got the same size grain tank as your as, 230 series. As, as beast spine over there. Over there. You see that cross flow cleaning right there? Right That's there. a key part of our cleaning system technology. So if you look at uh, this uh, mechanism right here, this actuator is basically attached to our cleaning system. And a typical cleaning system will oscillate four and a half. Um, when this machine gets on a hillside, and I've noticed you guys have a few hills around yeah, here. Yeah, a few of those, yes. When it gets on a hillside, there's an inclinometer that will sense that, and it will adjust this cylinder and literally start shaking the sieves sideways. At the back of the machine, you see our um, residue package. This happens to be a dual disc spreader system. These discs are hydraulically driven, so we can literally change the uh, spreader speed. We also have wind guards here, and we can adjust uh, those as well. It allows us the ability to change for the volume of crop as well as the width of the header so that we can match that uh, spread pattern uh, to the header width. What we have right here is actually our grain camera. So on our 250 series combines with automation, the grain camera will literally monitor for cracks, for brokens, for grain damage, for mog, and it monitors that as the grain goes into the, uh, into the tank. And that's part of the um, Harvest Command system to adjust for grain quality. Another uh, big enhancement with the 160 series is we've gone from a belt drive fan system to a hydraulically driven uh, cleaning system fan. We've uh, gone to hydraulic drive because this is an integral part of Harvest Command. The ability to adjust your fan speed quickly and efficiently so it can respond to those changes in crop and conditions. So uh, all hydraulically driven fan drive. Another uh, uh, new feature on the 160 series is our variable speed feeder drive. On the right hand side of the uh, combine and the feeder house, you see the variable speed feeder drive. This gives us the ability to vary our feeder speed so that we can more closely match the feeder speed to the crop and the conditions that are, uh, uh, you're encountering. Also new on the 160 series is the feeder faceplate. We have an optional fore aft feeder faceplate. It literally pivots from the center of the uh, feeder house and it gives you the ability to change that feeder face mm. angle on the go. One other thing to mention on the new 160 series machines is these are what we call stage five emissions engines. And we've actually been building uh, this engine technology for a number of years, but we've typically been shipping those units to other markets, you know, Europe and Australia and like that, that have uh, higher emissions requirements. Here in North America, we are now 
utilizing stage five engines. So these, for us, are the first uh, stage five engines uh, oh, really? sold here in North America. Oh. Just climbed up in the cab of the 7160 and we have Ben up here. Nice to meet you, Ben. Ben, you are a? Harvesting product special specialist with Case IH. Cool, okay, where, where are you based out of? I live uh, outside Fargo in North Dakota. Oh, you came all the way out here? I did. Hope you brought some of the rain with you. I didn't have any rain. Oh. <laughs> okay, well you're gonna show me a few things here on our stream, so let's take a look. Yeah, we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about just the basic setup of our harvest command. So if I go to our automation tab down here on the bottom right, uh, really basic setup for it, uh, crop type at the top, um, work condition, which we can set in here if we want. Uh, that, that lets us save some custom settings for us if we want to return back to them. Um, our automation strategy, so we have four of those when our automation is on. Uh, these bottom two settings are for our feed rate, which is ground speed or cruise control. Uh, the 6.2 miles an hour is how fast do I want to travel through the field maximum. And engine load is where the machine will start slowing down uh, when I hit that engine load. So advanced setup screen here. Um, my starting point, if I'm really not sure how I want to set up my combine, I can just pick automatic. Uh, basically the combine will bring in our default settings, what's in the operator's manual. Um, really simple to set it up. Uh, adjust frequency is how often we're going to make adjustments with the harvest command system. Uh, threshing condition, uh, most crops will run on easy. We get into some of the spring wheats and durum uh, that are harder to thresh out. We can select uh, easy, medium, or hard. And basically it's going to run the rotor faster to thresh those crops out a little bit harder. Well good, I guess all we got left now is to uh, go find some wheat. Yeah. Go combine. Go find a field. You guys ready to go pick some wheat? So there's actually one thing I need to do to this combine before we go to the field. You'll see. That's more like it. That hill blended in the field. Just don't tell Beastbine we swapped this one with the Montana flag on him because, well, he's used to that one, but. He won't know it. We'll make it work. We got a couple friends here from Case IH and uh, I told them I'd shoot the cannon, so we got to have some volunteer. Who's the volunteer to shoot the, or pull the string? Come on, Kelly. Oh, okay, so here we go. Here we go, guys. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, we were rolling. Got to the field, things are dialed in. Wheat's flowing in. This is a lot better looking than the crop we were in earlier. Ben can attest for that. <laughs> it's more enjoyable to be in this crop. See how it actually flows in? It's nice. The reel's actually grabbing stuff. And you're actually seeing numbers happen over here. So this sand about 30 bushels an acre in this spot. That's awesome. That'd be great if it was across the board. So as we got going on here, we've got rotor loss in this side of this funnel, right? Half funnel, like up the funnel of the cone. So rotor loss is right there. This side is cracked grain. Obviously we have no cracked grain. A little bit of rotor loss. That's tailings right there. So it's in the green, that's good. Just spiked, now it's red back down. And then that's mog or, or, or junk that's in the, the grain. So depending on how dirty your sample is, what that is. And then um, this is left and right sieve. So there's sensors on each side. It tells you which side is low, low, losing, which side's not. And uh, we can go to 
info page here. There's the cross flow shake. So you can see it's putting a little bit of angle on the cross shake because we're just slightly angled, I think, to the left here. So it's trying to keep that grain flowing evenly across the sieve. Good. We're just gonna get out and do a quick loss check and just see what's ending up on the ground out here. So let's go find out. Little teeny kernel right there. That's a little shriveled thing. Let's go on the tire tracks. Wow, that's pretty clean. Looks like one right there. There's a couple. I mean, there's a few, but they're really shriveled kernels. Yeah, that's kind of what I saw. Over here. They're not much. Yeah, they're 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 the really, really, really shriveled ones. I was gonna say it was saying 40 bushels a minute ago. Yeah. Oh, it still looks good though. That's a nice looking wheat though. Yeah, I just think that's a normal year right there. That's what the whole farm should look like this year. Soon, we'll be there. Let's go get a grain sample. There's a reason for this sample. It's not really a sample. It's more of a, a batch of grain that we are gonna send in the mail soon to go to the farm show, the farm progress show, where this combine will be. And we'll be there too. But they wanna display some of the grain harvested from our farm here in Montana from that combine. I told them, they said they wanted bigger than Bigger than a peanut butter can, but smaller than a bag of dog food. That was kind of my description. What do you think? Is that good? We'll mail that. That'll be at the show. Good deal. There, we just wrapped that field up. 150 acres and it took off almost 5,000 bushels. So a good 30 bushels an acre average. I love it, love it. So we're gonna go over across the road to another side. It's not gonna be as good as this one, but it still might surprise us some. This area got more rain, probably an inch and a half more. It's just amazing. And and, and this was fallow to ground too last year. So that makes a big difference too, it wasn't re -crop. Now many of you are probably wondering what in the world is going on back here behind me? That is because this is kind of a unique combine. This is not a combine you can buy because it's an engineering combine. This combine is basically like 95% of what the production model will be. Um, I'm sure there's some updates that are still going to come to it and it's in the process of being tested So that second pro 700 monitor there is actually a unit they use for I guess monitoring the software as the automation happens and other things too And then as you can see they got the fuse panel off. They got a whole bunch of wires plugged in there and a whole bunch of boxes and Well, basically what they're doing is they're taking this combine It follows a custom cutting crew across the country and they try to put in as many crops as they can and collect the data from all the crops as the harvest command the automation is taking place. It's pretty neat how that works. And we're running a 35 foot FD2 header. It's my first time running a flex head. I've never been in one of a flex head before, so this is pretty fun seeing things move. It's amazing all the stuff that's going on in this header. But uh, it's been doing a really good job, really liking it. Um, it's, it's got the no plug uh, cutter bar on the front and uh, some gauge wheels that set the depth. It's pretty awesome. So that combined with this combine, combined with combine, works out to be a good match. If only it was 50 feet though. 50 feet would be okay. I'd like to try 50 feet. That'd be nice.
somehow I managed to be the truck driver again, but that's okay, I like it. Running truck's fun. It's fun to jump around. It also is very smoky outside. Not sure where this smoke's coming from, Rocky Mountain somewhere probably, or somewhere west of that. But today and tomorrow are gonna be smoky and it's supposed to clear up. But at least I got nice lights in the truck. That's good. Well, my time ran out for the time being. It's time for Leg Arms to have his time in the 7160. So he's up there running right now from the hilltop. A little bit of orientation, got him going. And I'm back in Beast Pine. So we're making friends again. He doesn't hate me. 7160 does like me. Well, I'll get time again. There'll be a time. There's always a time. We'll see when that time comes in time. Yeah. But with that time, now is the time to be cutting 26, 27, 28. 30 bushel wheat down here. Man, isn't that nice? Oh, that feels so good. Feels so good. Just need another 3,000 acres of this, and that'll help even out the 3,000 of terrible acres. After running this machine for probably about an hour or so, I've been able to get kind of a feel of it, just kind of learning more about how the system operates. And it's actually really sweet. Um, compared to other ones, you're controlling the speed, you're watching everything, and you're adjusting it manually. Uh, this one here, obviously you don't have to do that, it's automation. But it's really fun for me to watch my chaffer and sieve and a few settings here change numbers and as this thing's speeding up and slowing down, I'm watching where it's thinner, I'm like, oh, it's gonna start speeding up and it speeds up and it hits a really thick spot and it starts slowing down and it's just fun that way. But uh, it's, it's pretty slick, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I'm very impressed with how well this thing's keeping up to those 8230s, because those 8230s, they're, they're a bigger machine, um, and this one's a little bit smaller, but it's it's definitely uh, holding its own, let's put it that way. But I do like the uh, adjustable spout on the auger. Our other ones don't have that, so you can shoot that wheat to the side of the truck, or closer or further, or whatever you want. It's just, it's nice. Little things like that. But granted, our other machines are like 10 years old, so this thing better be nice. And I think this is just awesome. All of this stuff right here, wires everywhere, I love it. It fits right into Welker Farms. Pretty sweet. Back in the saddle again. Hopper top's closed. His hopper top's closed. Dad took off through the middle of the field for some reason. We're heading to the other side of the farm. It's really windy today. If you look at the Montana flag flapping, or if you look carefully, you can see Old Glory there on this auger. 
and uh, it's gusting up to 40 some miles an hour and it's so dry here you could burn half the county down if you start a fire so we're gonna get out of this area because there's too much grassland near us that if it caught fire it'd be a bad deal so we're gonna head to the other side of the farm where we've got a bunch of chem follow and it's a big block and we're gonna start on the other side of the wind and slowly work our way into the wind keep getting acres cut but hopefully be in a safe area where if we do start a fire it can be controlled got to think about that kind of stuff all right Let's get out of here. Check out our fire rig. 2,000 gallons of old Dodge Fury. Oh yeah, it runs. It's a beater, but other truck, the rims broke, so this old pump, plus that, plus a fire hose. At least we're somewhat prepared in case we get a fire. Pray that we don't, but if we do. Oh yeah, let's not talk about the door lap. <laughs> it works. Hey, one thing I'm loving about this FT2 header, it's a three flex, so it's got a wing on this side and a wing on this side in the center. The county, like some of these roads out in some of our property out here, to do training for their new guys. So when they get new crews, they come out and bring all their graders out and they just create the roads. They rebuild them, tear them up, build them back up again. Well, this last time they did it, they didn't come back and finish cleaning up the edge here. So the field goes like that. And normally it's difficult to harvest, but with the flex head, I'm getting it all because this wing is going like that or along the whole thing. It's pretty sweet. We could just, you know, see over 10 feet and not be on that edge there, but we, we wouldn't do that. One of the neat features, as mentioned earlier in the video, is the cross flow cleaning. And we showed that actuator on the outside of the combine. Well, I want to show you in the process of it running with the camera in there, like how our combines are our 8230s, the whole entire shoe, that's the sieve, the chaff, or the chaffer, the sieve, pre-sieve, and the air system are on a big uh, frame and it slowly tilts left or right depending on the hill that you're on to keep everything as level as possible so gravity doesn't take all the seed, all the material, and pull it to one side, which overloads the side and underloads the other side and you lose stuff out the back. It's just all about efficiency. Well, this system doesn't do that. It stays level, but as it's shaken, it starts to shake it to the right or to the left, which then causes the material to climb up on the side that is open, that gravity is not affecting. So let's see that in action. I won't be able to have material on it though, because if you put a camera inside a combine while it's running, it's just a white, you can't see anything. Just a fog, just so much stuff blowing around. So I'll have to do it without anything going through it, but you'll see. So we've got three cameras on this combine. There's one on the unloading auger, which I can actually control the spout with this uh, multi-function handle here. You can see it turning, moving in and out. Isn't that cool? Um, then we've got a grain tank cam to see how full you are. So even though your alarm says you're full, you can keep pushing it to the max by seeing the grain get to the very edge up here. And then you've got a backup camera in case you want to back up to your fuel tank or something and you don't want to crush the back of the combine because sometimes it's hard to judge what's back there. But up here, we've got your windrow. So if you want to lay windrows, say you're bailing your straw, you can press the button here and it'll take and open up the back of the, the combine and direct the flow of straw and chaff onto a deflector which then lays into a windrow. 
or you press the button and it closes it. You can't really see it, but in the corner you can kind of see stuff moving right there. And as far as our automation goes, this is obviously a lot different than our 8230s if you guys have seen our screens. So you've got your rotor, your straw chopper, these, uh, the augers, I forget what they're called. Um, your fan, this is actually your, your uh, concave opening size, which you can adjust right here. So I can make it four, three, four, five. And then fan speed, obviously down there. Got your clean grain elevator, your tailings elevator, lower sieve, upper sieve. And I can change my crop type up here. So as you're going, these numbers will actually turn blue and that's when the system decides, hey, I need to open up your upper sieve a little bit, I need to close it a little bit, I need to increase your fan a little bit, or speed or slow your rotor up a little bit. And down here you've got rotor loss, cracked grain kernels, tailing uh, level, so if you've got a lot of material going through your tailings, you can see it up here, mog, so like chaff going inside your grain tank, left and right sieve loss, so it gives you a good idea if you're throwing one way or the other. And then you can pull up your cross flow shake and get an idea of how far is it shaking that sieve and kind of compare that to the loss and get an idea if you need to adjust it more or less. And if you're going through a lot of material, which we don't here, but if you are, you have the ability to adjust your uh, deflectors on the side of your spreaders. So, let's engage the separator. Don't have to have this run, but I feel like having it for the camera's sake. You can take your deflector and open it one way or the other. Mine also has a top speed at about 25 miles an hour, if I'm correct. Let's find out. Let's see, 22, 23, 24. Yeah, 25. Right on 25. So it's a little faster in 8230s, but I think that 8250s are similar speed as well. But that extra speed's nice getting around the farm. Almost forgot to mention, too. Yes, there's a cooler. Like all good things, eventually it's got to come to an end. Our time with the 7160 is now over. Ran some bushels through it, cut some acres, got to play with the 8230s, got to remember what it's like to run a belt-driven rotor and you know, tailings elevator, brought back some memories of our 2588s. This is just a very, very, very beefed up version of that combine with automation. So it was fun, but it's time to go, so we'll let her go.